did you know that every three minutes someone in the U.S. is diagnosed with a blood cancer? More than 1.3 million Americans are living with or are in remission from a blood cancer. Although, you know, all the blood cancers are the third leading cause of cancer deaths in the U.S., many people don't know the impact of blood cancers. Um, and we're going to talk about that September is Blood Cancer Awareness Month. And during this whole month of September, we're trying to focus on uh, healthy aging because it is also September is also healthy aging month. And so part of being healthy as we age is to make sure that we're getting screened, we're having our regular doctor's appointments. Medicare has that annual Medicare exam and you can get you, you know your routine uh, diagnosis, mammogram, you know, things like that, your colonoscopy. So uh, today we're going to focus for a few minutes on the blood on blood cancer. You know, there's three types of blood cancers. There is leukemia, there's lymphoma, and there's myeloma. And we're going to talk a little bit about what the differences are. And um, I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start with lymphoma, and the reason why I'm going to start with that one because that one just hits a little close to home. And I I just want to share a story about my mother-in-law that that how things, simple things that you're not sure of um, could be really something big. So a lymphoma is a type of blood cancer that affects the lymphatic system. So your lymph nodes, I mean, to put it in layman's terms, really, your, your lymphatic system is kind of like your sewer system. You know, it, get rid, it gets rid of the waste. Um, it removes excess fluid from your body, but it also produces immune cells. So lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell that fight infection. So when you have lymphocytes that are not formed properly or they're abnormal, they become lymphoma cells, which can multiply and collect in your lymph system, like your lymph nodes and other tissues. So over time, these cancerous cells impair your immune system. And so um, I was over at my mother-in-law's one time and it was um, in the spring, you know, um, just coming out of winter. So I, I we hadn't seen her uh, a lot, but uh, we were going over there and it was around um, Easter time and we were smack dab in the middle of COVID. Everything was shut down. And so this was March, April of um, 2019. And so she, I was looking at her and I said, Ma, I said, you know, what's that, you know, what's that, you know, lump under your, your chin there? She says, I don't know. I, I've had it, you know, for you know, a couple of weeks or so, I didn't think anything of it. I said, I, you have a sore throat, your ears hurt. Do you have any teeth? You know, because usually when you've got fighting an infection, you know, your lymph nodes might swell up a little bit in the area where you've got something going on, like for strep throat or mono, mononucleosis, that's a big, or Epstein-Barr virus, that's a big thing where, you know, you, the lymph nodes get swollen underneath your, your chin. And, and I said, I said, Ma, you, you need to go get that checked. And so we made a doctor appointment. Uh, the the practitioner that checked her was in the full garb, you know, um, because of COVID. And she, you know, I went with her, and she, you know, didn't even really want to touch her. And I was a little upset with that. And I asked the practitioner. I said, "Can we get an ultrasound? Can we look at that at that lymph node? Can we make sure that it's nothing, you know, going on?" And so she said, sure, I'll order it. So we went right to ultrasound. Um, they ultrasound it. The radiology says, you know what, this is going to need a biopsy. This is concerning. And kudos to my mother-in-law, because while she's in there, she says, well, why can't we do the biopsy right now? He says, okay, let's do it. So it came back a, a, a T-cell type of lymphoma in aggressive form, and she ended up having to get chemo. Um, it is now 2023 and her PET scans have all been clean. She went through one course of chemo, but again, you know, it, it would have been very simple for someone to just let, you know, something like that simple lymph node swelling, um, you know, go or ignore that. So that was just, uh, if you take away anything from this little presentation um, is, is just, you know, when you've got you know, if you're not feeling right or you no notice any abnormal swelling, um, running fevers for no reason, you know, just make sure that you get it checked out. All right. So the second type of blood cancer is something that we've all heard of, and that's called leukemia. 
And that is found in your in your bone marrow. And it's also caused by the rapid production of abnormal white blood cells. Again, the white blood cells fight infection. But when they're abnormal, they can't, in this instance with leukemia, they, they're not working properly, so they can't fight infection. And so um, this causes the ability of the bone marrow to, you know, it also impacts the inability of the bone marrow to pr produce red blood cells and platelets, which are other, the other two very important components that make up your, your blood cells. And so there are, we're not going to go into the different types of leukemia, but there are different types of leukemia. And the third type of blood cancer is called myeloma. This is uh, a cancer, the plasma. So, you know, some people go and they donate plasma and that's, you know, kind of the clear fluid. They're, they're white blood cells that produce disease and infection fighting antibodies that um, your body manufactures. So myeloma cells prevent the normal production of antibodies, leaving your body's immune system very weak and therefore you're prone or susceptible to infection. So those are the tr three types of um, blood cancers. Um, so, you know, if, if examples of some symptoms might be for, um, they're going to be different depending on which type of um, blood uh, cancer that you have. But for example, um, leukemia, they, you might include fatigue, easy bruising, bleeding, uh, symptoms of inflammation lymphoma may include um, coughing, fevers, as well as swollen lymph nodes, which is what, what we noticed in my mother-in-law. Lastly, myeloma can be indicated by um, bone pain or frequent infections. So it's really, you know, it's really important um, to pay attention and look at these, you know, frequent frequent signs. Again, we'll go over one more time some of the, the frequent signs. So let's, we'll look at uh, frequent infections, fatigue, uh, anemia, or low, low blood counts, uh, swelling in it, any part of your body, your, your lymph nodes, fever, night sweats, um, especially enlarged lymph nodes in your neck, like we talked about, or your armpits, and for the myeloma, bone pain, easy bruising, bleeding, or recurrent infections. So this is, you know, what we wanted to, to um, talk about. You know, some lymphomas may be hereditary, I know people with Down syndrome are more prone to these blood cancers, uh, but I'm going to put in the um, in the details on the video. I'm going to put some resources for you. And again, all we wanted to do is just kind of bring an awareness here. And for Healthy Aging Month, again, just just pay attention to your body. Try and live a healthy lifestyle as much as possible. Eat right. Get exercise. Drink. Get your water in you know, you know, get, make sure you're getting enough sleep and we'll see you back here for some more Tuesday tips. Take care and have a great night.